What's up, everybody? Welcome to Heresy Financial. My name is Joe Brown, and for the first time, Russia now holds more gold than they hold of U.S. dollars. And so this is a big uh, kind of turning point for a while. While they were increasing their gold reserves, they were also increasing their dollar holdings. But the trend changed recently, and now, for the first time ever, those, uh, those places in their uh, reserves have swapped. So now they have more gold than dollars in their, uh, in their central bank reserves. So we're going to talk about that, talk about how that happened and what the implications of that are moving forward. Ready? Let's dive in. So yesterday, Bloomberg released this article showing the details and the breakdown of what the uh, the new central bank reserves are that Russia has and how the dollar is now second place in their reserves to gold. And so gold now makes up 23% of their reserves. Now, for years, Russia has been one of the biggest buyers or the biggest buyers of gold globally. And it's been no secret. And this is their official holdings. And there are some private estimates that uh, look at some unofficial figures that are looking at some other non-public indicators that say that it's possible Russia has enough gold to completely 100% back their currency with gold if they wanted to at any time. But even if this is not true, they definitely have more gold compared to their currency than any major country uh, anywhere else. And so from the standpoint of the stability of their currency and preparation for the fall of fiat, their, uh, their currency is definitely positioned in a very, very strong place. Now, if you look at this chart, you can see that that the, uh, the amount of gold that they hold and the amount of dollars that they hold in reserves uh, had been kind of in lockstep for a while. They were both moving up together. In 2018, they had a severe decrease of the amount of dollars that they held, and then uh, the amount of gold and dollars that they were holding kind of moved in lockstep for the next year and a half or so until the beginning of 2020. 2020 is when this trend changed and their dollar holdings started to decline significantly, especially compared against gold, which kept on ticking up a little bit higher. Now, they stopped purchasing new gold towards the beginning of, uh, of 2020, and that was partly due to the pandemic and the coronavirus. And you remember how oil prices went negative. And so they had to stop some of their gold purchases simply because they weren't bringing in the revenue that they were before. This was more of a long term thought out plan, though, because they knew if they can influence oil prices to go down, that would would flush out some of the uh, some of the other uh, producers of oil, and that would be better for them for their revenue uh, for oil long term. At least while oil is still the main global source of energy. Now, again, it's no secret that Russia has been doing this. They're very public about this, and uh, it's apparent that their uh, reasoning behind this is to de-dollarize. They don't want to have uh, you know be be subject to these uh, the the U.S. sanctions. They don't want to have any influence. They want to be kind of uh, outside of the dollar system. So they want to hold less and less dollars so that. Uh, any business that they do, they don't have to rely on dollars. They want to be able to transact with other countries without having to go through the SWIFT system so that they're not dependent on, uh, you know, following the U.S.'s rules. Because of this, they also have other currencies as part of their reserves. They've got a bunch of one. They've got a bunch of uh, euros. And it looks like this trend will continue where the dollars that they hold will become less and less and less. Now, when you're a big money player, uh, it makes sense to make these plans very long and drawn out. When you consider even some something like uh, the effect that a mutual fund has on the share price of, of a stock as a as a large mutual fund you know let's say an actively tr uh, actively managed mutual fund you can't go in and just buy up you know 10 15 20 percent of a small company's shares uh, number one because there's a lot of rules and regulations against doing that and uh, firm policies but at the same time that's going to drive the price of that stock way higher and then if you happen to get into a position of a, 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 on a stock that's maybe lightly traded or as uh, you know a, a low float and you end up holding a significant number of shares and you try and get out of that stock and sell those shares, uh, that would have a significantly negative effect on the share price. And so uh, having uh, having a large amount of money to deploy is, uh, is very difficult. You have to be uh, very strategic and slow and long term in how you move around capital when you're dealing with a large amount of money. I'm talking, you know, billions, trillions of dollars because you end up moving the markets that you're trying to get in and out of. You can think of something like Jeff Bezos or Elon on Musk, if one of them decided to go to the market and just start selling all of their shares so they could cash in their chips and uh, just uh, turn all of their equity in their company into uh, into cash, 
they wouldn't actually be the richest person in the world anymore because number one, there's not enough buying of those shares to keep that price elevated, to keep their current net worth listed at what it is. So if they start selling, you know, 50% of the total shares of a company come onto the market at once, that's going to shove the price down. And then that price drop and the fact that you know that, you know, a big player like the CEO or the president or the founder is selling their shares, all of that's going to contribute to the price falling and it could be worth, you know, 20% of what it was. And so when you talk about somebody's net worth, that's kind of like unrealized, especially for like these big billionaires that hold a majority stake ownership in their companies, because if they actually tried to access that equity or even a significant percentage of that equity, it would drive the rest of the shares down. And so this is why we likely, not certainly, but we likely won't see any giant actions by central banks, especially places like China and Russia, at least yet, where they start just massively, like the nuclear option, where you just start massively dumping treasuries and dollars. You're probably not going to see that because the very act of that amount of uh, of dollar of dollars or treasuries coming onto the market at once would uh, it would shove the value down relative to everything else of those assets so quickly that it would make the rest of their remaining assets before they could sell them worth a lot less. And so maybe the first ten percent that they sell, they're getting the current price, but then the price goes down, and so they're as they're continually unloading, it's shoving the price lower and lower and lower. And so especially short term, it's very damaging to unload a massive amount of assets onto a, a market that can't support it that quickly because it uh, it makes the rest of that uh, that portfolio, that the holdings of that asset worth a lot less. And so what we're more likely to see is just a continuation, a slow continuation of de-dollarization. It's led by Russia, close behind by China, and it's being followed with central banks and uh, countries all around the world. This is a trend that will only continue this year and into the next years that uh, the, the rest of the world is slowly getting rid of the dollar because they're seeing, hey, all of this money is getting spent. It's not going into uh, into anything like uh, infrastructure or spending that's going to have a positive ROI on the GDP, all of these asset purchases that are paid for by uh, central bank inflation or the Federal Reserve printing money to buy these assets, all of this is uh, never going to be unwound. And so the purchasing power or the relative value of all those dollars and treasuries is continually going down. But they don't want to accelerate that trend. Nobody wants to be the person that dumps that first giant dump onto the market and causes a, a very fast unwind to happen because then it hurts everybody. So And so what's more likely to happen is just a slow continuation of this where more and more central banks around the world diversify their reserves and get the dollar down to a much lower level of their reserves that they're holding and uh, get gold up to a much more higher level of, of reserves that they're holding percentage wise and also diversify into some other currencies as well. Now, of course, anything can happen if there is one event that causes a uh, massive sell-off and a spark and it kind of ignites and it causes like a, you know, a panic, you could absolutely see a dollar dump happen all at once, but it's not going to be likely done from a decision, an active decision that's not reliant on any outside factors from a central bank like Russia or China, because ultimately, especially in the short term, it would hurt them more than it would benefit them. But history is playing out like it always does as fiat money comes into play. And as fiat money starts to be diluted, devalued, depreciated and destroyed by the central banks that control that fiat currency people and other countries start to slowly move back to using real money using gold and so it looks like that trend is repeating itself it's happened over and over again for thousands of years looks like it's happening again now if you want the best guide available on how to buy gold i've put a guide together on all the different ways you can buy gold whether it's in an investment portfolio a retirement account or just for your own personal savings if you're going to store it in a private vault or if you want to store it at home i've got the ultimate guide it's linked in the description below and i've got a couple of my recommendations resources on who I use to invest and purchase gold as well. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.